Transpiration is an important physiological phenomenon found in plants whereby they lose water in the form of water vapor from the aerial parts and into the atmosphere. About 98-99% to of the water absorbed by a plant is lost through the process of transpiration. Hardly 0.2% is used in photosynthesis while the remaining is retained in the plant during growth. There are four major types of transpiration. Stomatal, cuticular, lenticular, and bark transpiration. Transpiration is an inevitable consequence of photosynthesis because for adequate photosynthesis to take place, a large surface area must be exposed to the atmosphere to absorb sunlight and carbon dioxide. A leaf which is permeable to CO2 will also inevitably be permeable to water vapor. Transpiration is essential for the movement of water and solutes from the roots to the aerial parts of plants. However, transpiration often tends to occur in excess, especially during hot, dry, and sunny days, resulting in excessive water loss from the plants and causing wilting of the leaves. Transpiration is therefore often termed as a necessary evil. Transpiration is affected by several external and internal factors such as light intensity, atmospheric temperature, wind, stomatal opening or closing, shape and abundance of leaves in plants, etc. In this video, we're going to focus our attention to stomatal transpiration and perform a simple yet elegant experiment to demonstrate stomatal transpiration and at the same time determine which surface of a leaf transpires the most relative to the other surface. For this experiment, we'll need the following. Cobalt chloride, distilled water, beaker, stirring rod, filter paper strips, some forceps or tweezers, a bottle with tight fitting cap, petri dish, scissor, a pair of glass lights, sticky tape or some paper clips. To begin the experiment, prepare approximately 3% aqueous solution of cobalt chloride using distilled water. Dip some filter paper strips into the solution for about a minute or so. Remove the filter papers using a pair of tweezers and lay them one by one on a petri plate or a dish. Dry the papers in sunlight or an oven. Once they are dry, cobalt chloride papers turn blue in color. The blue color immediately turns pink when in contact with water. You may store the dry paper strips in an airtight bottle for future use. Remove a strip of cobalt chloride paper from the bottle using a tweezer and cut tiny identical squares from these strips using a pair of scissors. Using a tweezer, place one paper square on the upper surface of the leaf and place a glass light on top. Holding the slide in position, turn the leaf upside down and place a second paper square on the lower surface of the leaf. Place a second slide on top of the paper square and press both slides together without crushing the leaf. Secure the slides by taping them together on both corners using a sticky tape or a pair of paper clips. Leave the setup for a few minutes and observe. After several seconds or minutes depending on the weather, you'll find that the blue color of the paper squares slowly begin to turn pink. If you are using a die cut leaf for this experiment, you'll also find that the color change is comparatively much faster in the paper square which was placed on the lower surface of the leaf. On the upper surface though, there is very slow and very little or almost no color change even after several minutes. You may repeat the experiment using leaves of different species of plants under different conditions of temperature and humidity and make a record of the amount of time it takes for the color change to take place on both surfaces of the different species of leaves. From this experiment, we can make a generalized conclusion that transpiration occurs at a much faster rate on the lower surface of dicot leaves vis-a-vis -vis the upper surface. The rate of transpiration also tends to vary across species and among dicots and monocots.